What's going on people and welcome to Man Knows Football. You are here with Goonie for another transfer video and this one is very, very interesting and one that I did not really expect to be making. But today we're going to be talking about the potential transfer of Cristiano Ronaldo to Chelsea and Frankie de Jong to Chelsea as well. Yes, the stories have been circulating like crazy on social media, in particularly on Twitter. And I have been looking at one or two credible sources and they have been talking about the possibility of at least Frankie de Jong making his way over to Chelsea Football Club. But obviously, before we get into all of that good stuff, make sure you do hit that subscribe button, leave your thoughts down there in the comments as well and smash a like on this video. So let's start off with none other than global superstar Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the modern goats in this game. Yes, CR7 over at Manchester United apparently is not happy with the ambition that Manchester United have in this transfer window and is worried for the club's future. Therefore, is open to a move. Although he doesn't have many suitors, he is looking like he could be heading over to Stamford Bridge with interest registered from both parties and I know that might come as a surprise to some Manchester United fans or it might not because like I said the news has been out there and it's been out there for a few days now so this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody but is this a realistic deal is it a smart deal to do now from a footballing perspective when we look at what he can offer to the team in terms of goals, something Chelsea are desperately lacking. I do believe he can definitely do a job up top if he comes into our team. As that central option, he is head and shoulders better than anybody we have in the squad. So in terms of improvement, absolutely. Everywhere else on the pitch, it remains to be seen in terms of his dribbling and his ball retention. And, you know, you can't really, you can't really blame him. He's getting older. Nobody can fight against time, you get me? Sometimes seeing him on the ball trying to beat a player is really, really painful. So... The outlay for this player, £15 million apparently is the quoted price that Manchester United are going to accept to get rid of him. But you've got to look at the package around it. The wages he's going to be asking for is going to be ridiculous. Definitely going to be north of like half a million a week. Is it a wise financial outlay for such... You know, you, you can never take away his legacy and, you know, his prolificness. Wherever he goes, he gets the goals. You get me? And will he do it at Chelsea? I think he will. Would he, will he have a better foundation at Chelsea to score more goals than he did at Manchester United? The struggling Manchester United side, I may add. Absolutely. Especially with like the rumours that have been circulating around with the certain players that we're looking to bring in. I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo would love to operate centrally in the team that we're proposing to build. So that's an interesting one. We do know that Todd Bowley has met with agent, um, well, super agent Jorge Mendes. They have discussed the possibility of one or two of his clients possibly coming over to Chelsea Football Club. And obviously, one of those in being superstar Cristiano Ronaldo. Todd Bowley was keen on the idea, but like Chelsea have maintained and like the media have maintained that the final decision will always lie with Thomas Tuchel. So, let's look at some of the reports that have come out on Cristiano Ronaldo and what some of these journalists have been saying. And also as well, listen... There is always two sides to a story as well. There are other journalists that are saying that Manchester United are not open to Cristiano Ronaldo leaving uh, Manchester United. They would like him to fulfil his contract. So any bid that will be made by Chelsea will be rejected. So this one I'm taking very much with a pinch of salt. Do I believe the interest is there 100%? In this case, there's no smoke without fire. But our good friend, Mr Simon Phillips, did tweet and he did say... Manchester United will allow Cristiano Ronaldo to leave Old Trafford this summer if they, and they are expecting an offer from Premier League rivals Chelsea. And he quoted um, Graham Bailey there. And he also, there was another tweet that he did come out with that did say as well, Manchester United are willing to sell Cristiano Ronaldo and want around £13 million to open negotiations with interested parties. So, as you can see there, you know, the right sort of journalists that I listen to that I take more seriously than, than, than the others are reporting this. So there might be legs to it, but it does come down to whether Thomas Tuchel wants the player. I don't think we've heard like a genuine response from Thomas Tuchel or from a source that's strong enough saying that Tuchel wants to work with Ronaldo. And if that is the case, then we should prepare to see him at um, Stamford Bridge. What do I think of this transfer? Would I be happy with him coming in? 37-year-old Ronaldo coming into Manchester United. Was he going to get the goals for us? I absolutely believe he would. But I think the money could be used better off elsewhere. And that's purely down to the bias of his age. He doesn't have much left in his career. It's going to be a very expensive outlay. 
Um, it does good for our pro for the profile of our club, the fact that we can attract such a massive superstar to Chelsea Football Club. We can't underestimate that. But for me, I would prefer the outlay to go elsewhere. That kind of money is, you know, it's, it's crazy. And it might cause issues in the dressing room. One player getting north of half a million a week and the rest might be looking at it like, hang on here. You know what I mean? We want some improvements on our contract. So I can see the problems that arise for me. And for me, it's way more of a risk than I would like to take. So let me know what you think about the situation on Cristiano Ronaldo. Would you take him at Chelsea Football Club? If so, why? Or would you not take him at Chelsea Football Club? Who would you prefer that we put that kind of financial outlay onto? Because remember, he's going to want um, a decent signing on fee. So is his agent and the wages as well. And I don't know how much of his image rights that he wants to retain as well. So look, could be an expensive deal. But let me know what you think about Cristiano Ronaldo's possible move from Manchester United to Chelsea Football Club. Let's move on to the next player and this one is a very interesting one. This one is Frankie de Jong. Yes, the Barcelona central midfielder. Dutch, an absolute, absolute maestro in my opinion. Has he fulfilled his potential so far at Barcelona? In my opinion, he absolutely hasn't. Do I think his time has gone to prove himself? Do I think he's a dusted player? Absolutely not. I think that is a myth. I rate de Jong as one of the most intelligent football minds that's out there i see why barcelona wanted to sign him made perfect sense and barcelona at the time were actually earmarking him as a sergio busquets replacement obviously it hasn't worked out for him um because of his strengths you know his strengths are primarily more going forward you get me but um we're going to talk about frankie de jong and the situation that is currently around it now we do know that manchester united are current favorites to be signing frankie de jong um, they have registered interest in the player. They are negotiating a fee with Barcelona, a price that I'm sure a club like Manchester United will be able to afford and they'll be able to give him, I'm sure, the wages that he's going to be looking for. But this transfer does not come without controversy. Why? Barcelona. FC Barcelona. This transfer window, they have literally made it about them. They have been the epicenter of controversy in this entire transfer window, holding up deals for Chelsea, Manchester United, Juventus, um, and, and several other teams just with the way they're behaving, putting out promises that they're trying to sign players when they don't have the money, when the financially we can see that they're in crisis. And it seems that not only are they in crisis with people and entities outside of FC Barcelona it seems that they are in a bit of a crisis with some of their own players and Frankie de Jong is one of them apparently Frankie de Jong is owed a lot of money by Barcelona in terms of wages and bonuses that were foregone because he accepted I think it was wage reductions but he still owed some money and I believe it's in the region of 17 million pounds and I do have an article here that I would like to read to you guys that does give us a bit more insight on the situation with the player in terms of this debt with Barcelona. It, it, listen, they are in the worst position. I, I can't... How are they going to get away with this transfer window? It's, it's, um, I don't know, man. They look like they're not even going to exist in the next five years, if we're being real. But this is the situation on Frankie de Jong. So... I'm taking this from The Telegraph, written by James Ducker. Frankie de Jong transferred to Manchester United, held up by £17 million deferred wage debt. Manchester United's protracted pursuit of Frankie de Jong is being held up by money owed to the Netherlands midfielder by Barcelona wages he agreed to defer due to the coronavirus pandemic. Despite Barcelona president's claim, de Jong is not for sale. United reached a broad agreement with the Catalan club last week for a fee for the Dutchman that would see them pay an initial 65 million euros, which is 55 million pounds, with around a further 20 million euros, in quote, 17 million pounds, payable in add-ons. However, United's hopes of wrapping up a deal in time for de Jong to join the start of their summer tour have been complicated by deferred wages and bonuses the player is owed from Barcelona after he agreed to take a temporary pay cut to help ease the club's financial difficulties during the COVID crisis. 
De Jong joined Barcelona from Ajax on a five-year contract in 2019 on a fixed annual salary worth £12 million, but he agreed to reduce his salary by £9.4 million in 2020-21 and by £4.3 million last season, meaning he is owed £13.7 million in basic wages. He is also believed to be owed another £3.4 million in waived bonuses for playing in at least 60% of Barcelona's matches over the previous two seasons. De Jong extended his contract at the Nou Camp by a further two years to 2026, which allowed Barcelona to spread the deferred payments over a long period. But De Jong's prospective move to Old Trafford means Barcelona faced the prospect of having to foot a bill in excess of £17 million in wages owed to the player and has left new United manager Eric Ten Hag facing an agonising way to land his priority summer transfer target. A lot that has been explained there regarding the De Jong situation and some of it with, with fine details, may I add. So that is a, a good story that has been written there by James Ducker of the uh, Telegraph. So definitely go and check out the full story there. Very, very insightful like you have seen. So Barcelona are in serious problems. So in terms of like your Rafinha signings, Lewandowski, Kundes and these guys, I can safely say at this point from where it stands... And we do know there is a second economic lever that they have to activate to get more money coming in. But it does look like a struggle for Barcelona right now. Dembele is also a free agent, so don't sleep on that situation. But apparently, Chelsea have been monitoring the situation of um, De Jong. And they pose a serious, serious threat to Manchester United for the reason being that A... Thomas Tuchel does historically love the player and apparently was devastated when he went to Barcelona. Really did want him uh, while he was at PSG, but it didn't happen. So a second chance for the manager to go for the player who he's at a team in the current better standing than Manchester United. We do have Champions League football. Um, we have new owners. Our stability looks a lot more better than Manchester United. Right now, they look like they are in absolute turmoil. Players are leaving the club. You know, Paul Pogba's just left. Cristiano Ronaldo is trying to leave the club. And, you know, with those two gone, those are two massive holes filled in Manchester United. So any player looking at that situation might be thinking, hold on a minute here. Their structure's all over the place. They don't look like they're going to be winning anything anytime soon. And look where they finished in the league as well. So it's really looking unstable at Manchester United. I think their silver lining in their cloud is the fact that they have hired a good manager in um, Ten Hag who does have a footballing philosophy and is trying to bring that to Manchester United. But in my opinion, there's a lot of mentalities there that have been there for a while that you have to change. It's going to be a long, long-term project until Manchester United are anywhere near challenging for any kind of trophy, in my opinion. We're going to start off with the managing Barca account who have been quoting Mr. Gerard Romero. And listen, people, I will say this about Gerard Romero. He has had a good reputation as being, you know, a source over there in La Liga, particularly Barcelona. But for this transfer window, I'm putting him on a bit of a fraud watch because he does seem to be Laporta's mouthpiece. You get me? So he kind of is saying what, you know, Barcelona want him to say, which obviously makes him that bit more credible. But, you know, they are playing politics as well. So even the president is going to say things that are not believable and are going to solely be an interest to Barcelona. But we're going to start off with this tweet. Breaking, Chelsea are going with everything to sign Frankie de Jong. It's confirmed by Gerard Romero. Another tweet here from Mr. Reliable, a.k.a. Simon Phillips. Chelsea have communicated to Barca that they would like to go up against Manchester United for Frankie de Jong. What I've said about any midfielder coming in is that there has to be an outgoing first. And I still think the principle does remain even though it's for Frankie de Jong. And do we have any midfielders who look like they're potentially going out of the door? Well, there is interest in Jorginho. And again, Mr. Simon Phillips has tweeted this and he's quoted Mr. Ben Jacobs. Juventus are really keen on signing Jorginho this summer and want to discuss that as a separate deal to delict. So there you go. 
Juventus look like they are seriously interested in bringing Jorginho. This comes as no surprise. Jorginho's stock in Italy is still high. He's very, very much rated over there in Serie A. So, Frankie de Jong, what do I think about the player? I absolutely love him. I do love his skill set. I think he is absolutely brilliant. Would I have him at Chelsea all day long? This is a signing that I would like to see happen, but I'm going to talk from a responsible perspective here. Do I think he's a priority signing currently? Absolutely not. Defence needs to be addressed. The DM position still needs to be addressed whether he comes to the club or not. I'm still adamant on that. And I'm going to give you the reasons why. Because a lot of people think that he's going to be coming in as a lone six. But a manager of his has had something previous to say about him that is very, very interesting. And it is as followed. Ten Hag was asked the question once, can you play Frankie de Jong as a lone six? Eric Ten Hag in 2019 said he leaves the middle of the pitch too often for that and if you don't give him the freedom to go forward you won't get the best out of his game. That is from a manager who is familiar with um, Frankie de Jong, obviously worked closely with him over at Ajax in their successful season when they got to the Champions League semi-final which was an absolute... You know, they were underdogs at that point. Nobody expected them to go that far so hats off to them. Frankie definitely was integral to that. Um, so... That's a manager who knows a lot about the player and is saying there that to be using him as a sole number six is just going to open up so much space. So, look, if he is going to be seen to some of you as that Jorginho replacement, I think you're going to still be facing the same problems. However, I will say this. Frankie is a lot more mobile than what Jorginho is. I do think he would do a better job, but I still think you face that huge problem of vulnerability in terms of space being left open. And in the Premier League, you leave space open, you get killed. It is a very unforgiving league. We've seen it happen many, many a time before. So this is why I say this, that DM is key over Frankie de Jong. But if Chelsea are interested in him, I'm not completely against it as long as there is that plan for that DM. Because there is that opportunity to play the double six. You know, some people have been saying Kovacic and Frankie, but I still think that's very, very open. I think that is super, super open. You get me? I think that the, can you guys now see why I am thumping on and just giving you the emphasis as to why we need that DM? Somebody that can screen that, def and it's more than just screening the defense. The, 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 the characteristics that we're looking for, right, is yes, being able to collect the ball comfortably in front of the defense, having quick feet and being able to get out of danger, being able to spot the pass, also being able to have that tactical nous to sniff out the counter-attacking danger. Positioning, awareness, spatial awareness is key for that position. This is why we need Declan Rice. If we've got a midfield of Declan Rice, Frankie de Jong and whoever you want to throw in there, that is going to be, for me, an elite midfield. Absolutely. So definitely, we've got to keep an eye out on this Frankie de Jong situation because there are several reliable journalists that are talking about this and I honestly believe that if it is down to Chelsea and Manchester United, Frankie de Jong is going to pick Chelsea. I do think he's going to pick Chelsea. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. It's interesting to see that. Also, as well, we need to keep an eye out on what's going on with Declan Rice. I know a lot of people are saying it's not going to happen. Next summer, it will happen. But look, we get Frankie this summer and let's say we do get Deck next summer. That's still not bad because, look, we're not going into this season to win the league. For me, this is a rebuild. And if we're bringing in quality like this, that can only be a good thing. That can only be a good start. Yeah, remember, we've got 18 points that we need to make up on Liverpool alone. Forget Manchester City for now. We gotta, we gotta close that gap. We gotta be competing with at least Liverpool before we start talking about leagues. And these are the calibers of players under this manager that I believe can thrive. And also as well, trust your manager, people. Trust your manager. But I think I've gone on a bit long for this video I'm coming up to nearly the 20 minute mark but this one was a very interesting story and Frankie de Jong is a player that I do love and obviously the situation with Cristiano Ronaldo does seem to be being picked up by the more serious journalists so we did have to discuss that but big up people that have been tuning in thank you to everybody nearly 10,000 people watched the live with me and Julius so thank you for that so let's hope we can get similar figures for this video make sure you like this video make sure you share this video also leave your thoughts down there in the comments as well always good to read through what you lot think man but big up yourselves people wherever you are whatever you're doing please make sure you do stay safe bless up